Hi guys, myself Pranav is here to deliver today's presentation, Power Transformer Part 49. As the subject is of the continuation, so for your convenience, the link of the previous one is given under the description box. Let's start with introduction and adverse effect of harmonics on capacitors. Nonlinear loads, as due to the, their operating characteristics, may have to absorb a non-sinusoidal current causing a voltage drop of non-sinusoidal type at the supply source end. As of the consequential effect, a distorted voltage sources is simultaneously to be imposed on the connected linear loads also. Non-sinusoidal complex waveforms are thus to be formed by combining all together with a series of sine wave frequencies and these are to be denoted as harmonics. Harmonics are voltages or currents that operate at a frequency that is an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency that is 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. Fundamental frequency is there to be referred as the lowest frequency of a periodic waveform that produced by the harmonics. Category of harmonics whose frequencies that are not integer multiples of fundamental frequency are called interharmonics. Interharmonics of the category whose frequency values would be less than the fundamental frequency, then those harmonics are called as subharmonics subharmonics. Operation of nonlinear loads causes the distorted current whose effect on distribution systems that would have been serious as because of the increased current flowing in the system. Current delivered at harmonic frequencies does not deliver any real power to the load. But the load with having more total harmonic distortion that would have to draw more reactive power causing the distortion power factor low. Since transformer impedance is always be frequency dependent, so harmonic currents as of higher frequencies would also increase the heat losses, that is I square Z, where Z is the impedance in transformers and their wiring. The presence of harmonics, where in a system powering phase to neutral connected loads, that would have the cause of severe malfunctioning of the equipment as because of overloading of the neutral conductor. The creation of voltage distortion that also would have been the major effect of current distortion on an electrical system. However, Voltage distortion would have a little effect on operation of nonlinear loads connected either face to face or face to neutral. But a negative sequence harmonic, that is, fifth harmonic voltage distortion, while supplied to a three phase induction motor that would have to produce a negative torque. To 
offset that reverse torque and at the same time to regain its normal operating speed, the motor has thus to draw more current causing a serious problem such as overheating in the motor coil. As of the reason, it is often being a high priority in industrial facilities to eradicate the particular fifth harmonic current from systems powering three phase loads. As because fifth harmonic current causes the reverse torque. The conventional method of installing power factor correction capacitors can often make the situation further worse. As of the relation shown in the expression, Xc equals to 1 by twice pi Fc ohm, the capacitive reactance as it is to be inversely proportional to frequency. So the impedance of the capacitor that has to decrease as the harmonic frequency order increases. Since the impedance of the capacitors would have to decrease with increase in frequency to the order of the harmonics present, so a distorted voltage if supplied, then large amount of harmonic currents is thus to be drawn by the capacitors. The intensity of current as absorbed due to presence of voltage, harmonics may lead to severe overloads and that has resulted an adverse effect on the ultimate operating life of the capacitors. Hence, it is thus to be concluded that 1. Higher be the harmonic voltages, higher will be the dielectric losses of the capacitors. And number two, higher be the harmonic voltages, higher will be the thermal stress as developed on capacitor bank and its associated system or connected system. The situation must have become much more sensitive when there will be a cause of resonance phenomenon associated with capacitor bank operation in harmonic rich network. The situation must have become much more sensitive when there will be a cause of resonance phenomenon associated with capacitor bank operation in harmonic rich network. The resonance that would have to occur while at particular natural frequency of the system in which both the capacitive reactance and the inductive reactance of the harmonic rich electrical network are equal. So during resonance XL equals to XC or resonance frequency F equals to 1 by twice pi root LC. Hertz. As because XL equals to XC, that is twice FL equals to 1 by twice FC. So resonance frequency F equals to 1 by twice pi root over LC Hertz. At certain harmonic frequencies, there may have the possibility to create resonance in between the inductance of the operating transformer and the capacitance of capacitor banks in an electrical network. Points to be noted that capacitors are of, are of linear reactive devices and consequently not to generate harmonics, but capacitors can have to amplify harmonic current under resonance condition. As of the characteristics of capacitor where its impedance would have to decrease 
with increase in frequency and that leads to encourage more harmonic currents to flow through the capacitor. See the representation. Frequency versus reactancy norms. In case of capacitors, that may go comes down to ohm, but inductive reactance is increased with change of frequency, with increase in frequency. Capacitor bank is installed for reactive power compensation and power factor correction. But in turn, situation that would have been the worst affected if harmonics are present in the network. As of the figure 161, it is exhibited that the capacitive reactance would have to decrease with frequency, whereas in case of inductive reactance, it has to increase directly with frequency. Therefore, the harmonic order would have to increase with the decrease of capacitive reactance. Now, the harmonic current as flowing into the grid produces voltage drop, which is proportional to the impedance offered to that particular harmonic frequency component. The installation of capacitors in any AC power network that would have become much more sensitive to produce resonance with the inductive components of the network. Interaction and adverse effect of harmonics on power transformer. There would have a significant impact of harmonic loads on the operating power transformers connected in the system network. At the present context, Transformers are designed to operate at increasing level of magnetic core saturation so as to reduce the weight of the transformer as well as cost of the ferromagnetic core materials. One of the underneath factors that would have been forced to instigate transformer core saturation process. Number one applying an excessive voltage to the primary winding. Number two, operation at frequencies below the design frequency or exposure to DC offset. Normally, power transformer cores are to be designed and built with the laminations of special type of cold rolled grain oriented CRGO silicon steel, which has the advantage of allowing a higher flux density in the direction of the grain. CRGO silicon steel is a soft magnetic material with exceptionally high mechanical elasticity and magnetic properties in the rolling direction. A. High magnetic permeability. Number two, reduced magnetostriction. Number three, high resistivity. Number four, high stacking or laminating factor allows compact code designs and last one low losses magnetostriction is an intrinsic intrinsic property of ferromagnetic materials that causes them to change their shape when subjected to an external magnetic field All ferromagnetic materials are thus to be categorized with this phenomenon and as of its effect can cause 
losses due to frictional heating in susceptible ferromagnetic cores. Application of CRGO silicon metal as transformer core has excellent lamination factor with high knee saturation characteristics. Flux density saturation level is one of the most vital characteristics for selection of the magnetic material to build transformer core as per its electrical specifications. So for the performance, technicality is concerned. The magnetic flux limitations of ferromagnetic code transformers would have been the basic criteria to fix up as of their performance limiting factor. As of the basis, as of the basic conception, the current density in the windings that would have to determine the loss in the windings. Similarly, the operating magnetic flux density is the parameter that would have to determine the loss in the magnetic core. Ferromagnetic material has the very large magnetic susceptibility. However, the magnetic susceptibility is dependent on temperature and the strength of the magnetizing field. But the magnetic susceptibility would have to decrease with the magnetic field strength as the ferromagnetic material becomes saturated. Ferromagnetic materials have the characteristics to magnetize easily and in strong magnetic fields, the subject magnetization has thus to approach a definite limit, which is called saturation. This phenomenon has to in indicate that the infinite magnetic flux densities can never be supported by the ferromagnetic materials. Infinite magnetic flux densities can never be supported by the ferromagnetic materials. Once the saturation limit has attained, then any further increase in magnetic field force, that is magnetomotive force, would not result in proportional increase in magnetic field flux, most important. Hence, the ferromagnetic core material used in transformers have the finite flux densities, which means that the core as of their physical dimensions can only have to handle so much flux over the core area before they could have become saturated. The ferromagnetic core is one of the most integral component of the transformer and its saturation would force the transformer that fails to transform the voltages and currents proportionally. So, for the design is concerned, transformer under the steady state condition can have to operate close to peak magnetizing flux but below the saturation level. Under normal conditions, the magnetic flux that would have been limited to the core as because permeability of the core material is very high as compared to other parts of the transformer. Now, the magnetic flux density B of the ferromagnetic core is proportional to the quotient of supply voltage and frequency, that is V by F. That is, B is directly proportional to V by F.
the transformer core can have to saturate due to application of high voltage or low frequency or combination of the two. If the ratio of applied voltage and frequency, that is V by F, is somehow raised above the industrial design guideline as per standards ANSI or IEEE C37.91, then that may have the subsequent cause to reach into magnetic saturation of the connected transformer core. Prescribed guidelines are the intended to provide protective aspects of three phase power transformers above 5 MVA rated capacity of operating at voltages exceeding 10 kV. According to the guidelines, the occurrence of ferromagnetic core saturation or overexcitation of the power transformer that would have been exhibited when the ratio of voltage to frequency applied to the transformer terminals exceed 1.05 per unit at full load of 80% power factor, that is 0.8 power factor, or 1.1 per unit at no load. The current as required for setting up the magnetic flux in the core is called the magnetization current, which thereby is produced by applying the sinusoidal voltage to the transformer's primary. But the magnetizing current that would never be sinusoidal and would have been a distorted one as because of the hysteresis that presence of hysteresis. Transformer while is at no load, then there is no flow of current at the secondary side of the transformer. So there would have no demagnetizing flux generated from the secondary side magnetomotive force and the transformer has to draw only the no load current from the AC supply source. The major portion of the no load current would have been the magnetization current and the rest is the iron loss component of the current caused by AD current and hysteresis current. During energization period, the magnetizing current that may be very high and this inrush of magnetizing current is of the non-sinusoidal in nature of waveforms where may have a presence of significant amount of second harmonic content. So far the transformer is concerned the VYF ratio would usually be maintained constant. However, power transformer overfluxing condition that may happen as due to number one, the increase of the supply voltage due to sudden load rejection, that is throw of load. Number two, receiving end voltage that can be more than the sending end voltage as due to the Ferranti effect. If the transmission line is lightly loaded and proper shunt compensation is not provided. Number three, the transients and overshoots in the electrical network. The transients and overshoots in the electrical network. All these are being the AC overfluxing conditions. Transformer ferromagnetic core that may also have to experience 
a condition of DC overfluxing when the subject transformer is installed adjacent to DC power links and some of the zero potential current do not return through intended paths. Most predominant effect as being exhibited due to presence of a direct current in transformers windings is the process of half cycle saturation. This has instigated to have an increased harmonic distortion, increased reactive power losses, overheating and elevated acoustic noise emissions that is boozing sound. However, there would have been potentially significant source of direct current in transformers windings when a large number of AC and DC load current components that are connected to a common point of coupling. As compared to the connected AC and DC drives, it has also been exhibited that any circuit if equipped with three-phase half-controlled rectifier, then that may have to act as of a much more significant source of DC injection to the supply transformer. With the presence of the composite load structure, where that is likely to contain a large DC component, then for mitigating the effects of direct current injection, it is rather to be recommended for implementing a zigzag transformer. <laughs> DC current interaction, DC current interaction and saturation issue. DC current interaction and saturation issue. can therefore be mitigated by the two ways as of the situation permits. Implementing a delta zigzag transformer, delta connector that is primary side is delta and secondary side is zigzag transformer. Or number two, a normal three phase AC transformer combined with only zigzag winding at its secondary side. Let's stop here. Further to be continued at later stage. Thank you. Thank you for listening the video. Kindly do like, share and subscribe. Your subscription would encourage to post more videos. Also, share your comments or feedbacks inside the dedicated comment section. If you have any suggestions or specific topic you want, then let me know in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you for your patient hearing.